Hi everyone, this is Marty with Pezzadoodle Designs and I want to show you a little bit about some of the new vintage products that are coming out. Very exciting stuff. They were a big hit at CHA and Susanna at Susanna's Custom Art and Card Design is bringing all of this stuff into her store which is really exciting. So these are mostly aimed at jewelry makers but I want to make sure you realize that you know card makers and scrapbookers we use charms all the time as well you can use charms in your tags you can use charms in your mixed media stuff so don't think that you don't need to watch this because you don't make jewelry this is the little embossing folder etching folder and it's very small and then these are the little blanks, the vintage blanks. They're a fairly thin metal. You can't bend it very easily, so it's not super delicate. You place the little blank anywhere on your folder where you want the design to be. This is a folder that's already out, and the brand new 2012 folders should be available in Susanna's store by end of March, maybe early April of 2012 so be sure and check because they are some really cool designs but anyway you center this anywhere on the folder that you want to have your design and then you simply run it through your embossing machine now I use a cuddle bug very simple sandwich your A plate put it between two B plates and run it through this will also work with the Sizzix machines. Sizzix is the one that has um, come out with these with Vintage. So if you have a Big Kick or a, I forget the name of the other one, or Tim's Electronic Vagabond, any of those will work. Just look up online, you'll find the sandwich, the way you should sandwich it. Very simple. So I'm going to run this through and then I'll show you what happens. Okay, so open up your folder and you can see now that plain disc has a design, a raised design on both sides and then we're going to color it I've played around with a bunch of different methods so I'm going to show you all of them but primarily we have the Vintage Patinas. Vintage partnered with Ranger and you know Ranger always makes top of the line products. So we're going to shake these up. You can hear there's a little shaker ball, a little mixing ball in there. And I'm using Moss, Jade, and Verdigris. These come in little three packs of coordinating colors. Obviously you can put any colors together you want, but some work better together than others. Ew. So anyway, just going to put a little bit of these onto my craft mat. Whoa. You don't really need quite that much. Okay. Let's see if we can get you in a little closer so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Now this is a very dark metal. It's kind of got an aged look to it already. So we're just going to go in and you want to dab. If you brush, you might get some brush strokes, but it's got a much more um, organic feel to it. Also, if you dab and you get better coverage. And you can see this is a very opaque color, an opaque paint. Get the water out of your brush in between rinsings because it'll really water down the patinas and then I find that they don't work quite as well. So now I'm just going to blend in some of the other colors.
and then just work with it until you're happy with the look you have they blend nicely these colors work together well like I said they come in a set Now to speed things along, I'm just going to dry it with my heat gun so I can show you what to do next. Okay, so now he's dry. <clears throat> Be sure and, you, and let these cool off if you use your heat gun because this is metal, so it'll get very, very hot. Now we have the reliefing block, and this has two rough sides. Then it has a very, very smooth side, and this is sort of a medium grit. And you use these to add different effects to your piece. Now for this one, we want to accent that raised portion. So I'm going to take the dark gray side. And begin rubbing it. And now you can see it's rubbing off some of the paint. And you can do this as little or as much as you'd like. This one I rubbed it completely off of the raised area. This one I've just done it a little bit. So you can go as much or as little as you want with this. Do just a little bit more. polish it up a bit. Now in addition, remember I said that this is sort of a dark aged colored little charm. You have that raised portion on the back. I've gotten a little bit of paint on mine but that's okay. Now you can take this reliefing block and you can rub off the darker aged aging stuff and bring out the brightness of the metal underneath and you get a whole different effect. don't know why my camera is shaking so much. There you can see you get a whole nother effect. Which is pretty cool in and of itself. Polish it up a little bit. So this reliefing block is very, very cool. It has lots of uses. Now the biggest question that everyone was asking when these came out, when these were announced, what's the difference between the patinas and the alcohol inks. I thought alcohol inks were made to color metal. And you're right, they are. However, I did a little test with them and I found that because this metal is so dark and aged and the alcohol inks are transparent, they are not opaque color, they're transparent color, it really did not show up very well. However, you can still use them in a different way. So here's my blank that I did with alcohol ink. And the way I got it to show up, you can take this reliefing block and before you even emboss, before you do anything, take off that dark color that's got, that's aging it, that's making it look aged take that off because then you'll have totally shiny metal underneath which is much easier to work with when you have alcohol inks. So here I've embossed it 
with that little folder and you'll be able to see the ink much better. Just do a little comparison for you. So we'll put a little dab of alcohol ink. I've got some raspberry and purple twilight. So here's our dark side. And yes, it does show up, but it's very dark, which could be fine. I mean, you may want that look, but just to give you some other ideas, you'll get a much brighter effect when you have cleaned off or buffed off that darker coating. And then you can do the same thing. You can use the reliefing block again, rub off the color, make the embossing stand out. On this one, I embossed it first, and then I removed that dark coating on just the raised areas, and then I did the alcohol ink so that you can really see the difference in the recessed areas where it's very dark, and then the raised areas where it's much brighter. Now, of course, of course, you guys know how I'm so in love with Luminart. So I had to experiment a little bit with those. So I have two colors here. So we're going to paint with them and see what happens. I have a little pink azalea. These are the silks by Luminart. They're an acrylic glaze. Super duper shimmery. Super, super duper shimmery. So, start with a little pink azalea. And again, I'm just going to dab it. Dab it on. I'm getting it kind of thick. I don't want a thin wash. Come with a little harvest soul. And these colors blend well together also. And then you can use your heat gun to dry it. This is one I did earlier with Harvest Soul and Fern. Whoa. And then I'm going to take my reliefing block again. And buff that paint off of the raised areas. And just buff to your preference. You may like more, you may like less. But the idea is you really want that embossing to stand out. And now you have the color, which is, it looks very similar to enameling. But you also have the shimmer that Luminard is so well known for. So it's just yet another look. Okay, now we're going to do a little something else with our pendant. We're going to plop him in there. This is a Ranger melting pot. I'm so excited because I've never had one of these. And we're going to take some UT 
and just dump it on top and you can see that it is melting almost instantly. But we want to cover the whole thing. And as it melts, it'll spread a little bit and sort of flatten itself out. I have a little craft mat piece in here. Now these will be available cut to fit exactly but I'm not sure when and since patience is not one of my virtues I made my own. So I'm just going to coax it into any areas that are not quite covered. If you have never played around with UT, I highly recommend that you do it with or without a melting pot because it is really, really cool stuff. So many things you can do with it. Okay, so now we have it covered. Before I take it out of there, just for a little bit of extra pizzazz, I thought I'd add a little bit of this Gala Glitz. It's got glass shards and microbeads and all sorts of cool things in it. And once they are melted into that UT, they're not going to come off. There. Maybe add a little more. Okay, I'm going to grab my little tabs here. Oh, I wanted to mention when I'm doing this under the back foot back here. I put just a little eraser to lift it up because the pot slants to the back I guess as a safety thing if you have this whole thing full of molten UT you don't want it coming out of the front but for our purposes because I didn't want it um, rolling off of the little pendant I put something to prop it up so it's more flat so very carefully grab the edges of your mat because this is hot the mat is not. And lift it out and then let it cool. Okay, here's our charm with the UT on top. It's got almost a slight bevel, very slight. We've put the little beads and glitter glass in there and it protects your charm from any sort of damage. We also have this glaze that Vintage has put out along with all of its other fun new things. And you can brush this over the top of your piece and you can see that it's got quite a nice shine to it. It also provides some protection and then you can take, if you want, you can take your relieving block over that and give it a bit of a more matte look. So that it's not quite, well the light's hitting the metal so it's shining. But it gives you a little control over whether you want that very, very high shine gloss look or you want a bit more of a matte look. If you use the glaze over the alcohol inks, be very, very careful because it will remove, if you brush across this, it will remove 
the alcohol ink, so I I just dab very carefully. The glaze is very thin. So I just drip on a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. And then just kind of spread it with my brush. If you have air bubbles, make sure that you pop those. For the glaze, it's easier if you can brush it on over the patinas. You can just brush it on and you don't have as many air bubbles, but either way it works. And then you just let that dry. And you have a nice protective finish over your piece. You can do it on the plain side as well. This one has not been colored. So we can just spread that around. Quick and easy. Little extra step. And one final thing I want to mention, I don't have the tool. However, Tim Holtz has a punching tool and it will punch through metal and with that you could easily take that tool here's your top hole you can add a few holes down here so that you can put some addition additional dangling um, beads or other charms or anything like that that you might want to put on there punches right through the metal very easily and Susanna has those in stock as well and if you have any questions you can ask me or ask Susanna and be sure and visit her store she has lots of additional excellent products as well as these vintage items so I hope you enjoyed that can't wait to see what people start doing with these Thanks so much.